it's Keely from Soy and Chain. Thank you for joining me. Today I thought I'd share with you how I make our newly released shampoo discs. They're a solid bar of shampoo which are not only great for you and the environment, but they've also got several other benefits too. So I've been making and using my own shampoo since early 2017 and I have been really happy with the results. I went from having to wash my hair on a daily basis when using commercial shampoo to being able to go anywhere from two to four days when using my own. Now in 2018 I decided I wanted to introduce the shampoo bar into our range of products but I didn't want to use the recipe I was currently using even though I really liked it and was happy with it. The reasons being is that it took an awful long time to make as it's a hot process method of melting down the ingredients and then forming it into the shampoo once they're all combined. But this method also led to a very rustic looking shampoo bar which was great for me and my family and would be great for anyone else but it kind of didn't fit in with the look of the rest of my products. So I started to research into ingredients that I could use to make a shampoo disc that would actually go in with the rest of the feel of my products. During all of my research I was doing into the various ingredients I could use and for different hair types one ingredient kept popping up in all these recipes and resources that was just not available here in Australia. But nonetheless, I made up my recipe and I was just about to start looking at bringing in this ingredient myself or using an alternate ingredient that was available in Australia when all of a sudden sodium cocoa sulfate became available on the Australian market. So I got myself in some of this ingredient because this was the one that I was missing. I made up some of these shampoo discs and I gave them out to the people who had been using my previous shampoo and a few other people as well. And they've all come back saying how great the shampoo is and for those that had used my other shampoo said it was better than the original because I was including some extra goodies for the hair as well. And very quickly we got them into production and out on the shelves. So today I'm going to go and tie my hair up, put my hair net on, pair of gloves and then I'm going to share with you how I make my shampoo discs. So we have on offer two different styles of shampoo discs and a total of eight fragrances, so four in each. We offer a normal to oily hair and a dry to normal. And today I'm going to make the dry to normal shampoo discs and I'm going to be using lemongrass and Persian lime as this has proven to be the most popular one so far. Now although I can't make any claims about my shampoo discs, as I make these I will tell you why I actually chose each of the ingredients that went into um, my recipe and the reasons I found through my research. Now in my jug here I have put a little bit of distilled water and that is because I am adding some DL panthenol into my recipe and this is a vitamin B5 which is meant to be extremely good for the hair and it is also meant to add some conditioning benefits as well. So we're going to add that in. Uh, DL panthenol is water soluble so the idea is I'm popping it in here and letting it dissolve in the water so that it means that it distributes through the shampoo bar a lot easier. So I've popped that in there I'm just going to give it a quick mix up with my mini whisk So you can actually see that it is, you can see all the bits of the DL panthenol. Before now, I'm just going to pop that to one side and let it all dissolve. So while that DL panthenol dissolves in that water, I'm going to start getting together the ingredients that need to be melted down. I'm using a little bit of coconut oil, as a lot of people do report that coconut oil is meant to be very good for the hair. So I'm popping that in there. I'm also using it because it's one of those oils that can stay solid at room temperature. And I kind of figured that by having it as a solid oil, it's less likely to get messy in the shower and leave oil slicks. So the next ingredient we're putting in is some settle alcohol. I'm using this one mainly as a bit of a binder because it is known as a cosmetic wax. But I'm also using it for its emollency or its um, softening um, properties and it has also been said that this product then also allows the next product which is a conditioning emulsifier to combine with the hair a little bit better which is meant to then leave it feeling that really nice soft luxurious feel 
So we'll get our settle alcohol in here. Okay, so as mentioned, I'm also adding in a conditioning emulsifier. This is also known as BTMS 25. You can also get BTMS 50, and that has only really just come out on the market here in Australia quite recently. So as soon as my BTMS 25 is out, I'm going to swap over to BTMS 50 as it gives a much more um, conditioning and so a smoother feel. So okay, so we've got all of the conditioning wax in there and I'm just going to pop that to one side. It is quite cool in my shed today. It's about 15 degrees, so I know as soon as I melt this, because they've all got rather high melting points, the second I take them out the microwave, it's just going to solidify on me. So I'm going to pop this to one side for now and I'm going to finish putting the rest of the ingredients together. So we'll come back to this jug here and you can now see that it has gone clear. There's just a little bit of the panthenol that hasn't yet dissolved, but that should go over time. So we'll come back to this jug and I'll start putting the rest of my ingredients in. Okay, so the first one I'm going to put in is some hydrolyzed oats. Now they say that the hydrolyzed oats can help with frizz, so it stops the hair from being frizzy. Now I'm going to add in our extracts. Now both of my dry to normal and normal to oily shampoo has keratin extract. Keratin is something that is naturally found in our skin, hair, nails and everything else. So I thought we'd put that little bit of added keratin in for that little bit of extra care, especially if you are using things like um, blow drying it every day and using all the different products. So there's a bit of keratin. Now this is where the shampoos actually differ is the extracts that I use. In my normal to oily shampoo, I use a mix of hibiscus and rosemary extract. In my dry to normal, we are going to use a little bit of chamomile extract and we will also use a little bit of nettle as well. And both of these extracts are meant to be quite soothing and are meant to be anti-inflammatory as well. So I thought that would be nice for anyone that does experience those sort of dry, itchy scalps. But on saying that, our normal to oily shampoo discs do also contain a lot of those conditioning ingredients which should help if you do have that dry scalp and the um, in that other range of shampoo discs the hibiscus that I use is meant to add luster and shine to the hair and it also did say that it's meant to prevent or slow down the growth of grey hair. Now I do have grey hair and I can't really say that I've noticed much of a difference since putting the hibiscus in it, but I have noticed a luster and shine. And the rosemary um, is also good for promoting growth and putting natural highlights through the hair. Um, so the normal to, if you do prefer some of the smells in the normal to oily hair and you do have dry hair, you are going to be okay to use either or of those shampoo discs. So we've got those in and then the next thing I'm going to add in is my preservative. Now I choose to use Nipigard SCE as my preservative. I'm putting the preservative in because not only have I added the water for the DL Panthenol, I assume that these shampoo discs are going to be kept in the shower and in constant contact with water so I don't want anything growing on it. Now from everything I have seen, you could possibly use um, an Optifan or Liquid Gurmel. I don't use Optifan because it's a little bit harder to get for me. And I don't li use the Liquid Gurmel or Liquid Gurmel, however you prefer to say it, because there's an ingredient in there which I am allergic to. So I choose to use the Nipigard, which is paraben free, and I find it much nicer to use. So the next thing I'm going to do is prepare my fragrance oil. And today we are using lemongrass and Persian lime. Um, if you are looking for this one on the website, it is listed as lemongrass and lime because PayPal doesn't like the word Persian and it holds all of my orders whenever people order lemongrass and Persian lime. So we call it lemongrass and lime on the website. It is proving to be very popular in the shampoo bars and it has always been a popular choice in all of my other products as well. Now I do also colour all of my shampoo discs using mica and this is because we I find that we associate colour and smell together and by colouring this in a green it really pops those lemongrass smells. 
So I'm using just a little bit of lime spider mica from my micro obsession and I'm just going to pop some of that into the oil and then mix it in so that the colour disperses through the oil and then we'll disperse through our shampoo disc as well. So the next thing I'm going to do is go and pop this in the microwave in 20 to 30 second bursts until it's melted down. I'm choosing to use the microwave today. I don't usually use the microwave to melt my oils, but there's such a small amount here that um, from experience, I find these small amounts are actually quite hard to melt down on the stovetop without overheating them and without them just solidifying as soon as you move the pot off the stove. So I'm going to pop this in the microwave and melt it down. Okay, so the next ingredient we're going to add in here is our main ingredient, the sodium cocoa sulfate, which is a mild surfactant or the foaming agent, which is the, um, the, the cleaning ingredient basically. So sodium cocoa sulfate is derived from coconuts and we're using it in the needle format and this is not to be confused with SLS as has been on my Facebook page. So this is a completely different product and it is derived from coconuts. So we'll get this one all measured out. Okay, so we have our melted ingredients and I'm actually going to pour these in first because I need a little bit of warmth for my preservative to start to activate. It's actually currently too hot to pour straight into um, this mix, which is why I've put it in with the extracts and the, the vitamins there. But by pouring it in here, it should cool it down enough that I can now pour this jug in and the heat should start to activate that preservative. With your preservatives, you need to do a little bit of research into what your chosen preservative likes as they are all very heat sensitive. If you add them in when they're too hot, they are likely to actually just burn off and kill any of the goodness that is in that preservative. And if you add them too cold, it just doesn't actually activate them at all. So we're going to start giving this a good stir and then I'm going to give these jugs a little bit more of a scrape out. I can already see that those other ingredients are starting to solidify on me so I'm going to have to start working quite in a cooler climate and you are finding that your mix is setting up quite quickly make sure that you come in and scrape the sides of the bowl down because you will find that the um, settle alcohol coconut oil and the um, the conditioning emulsifier will set as it hits the coolness of the bowl so I'm just scraping that off to mix that in a bit more. Now you can use a stand mixer to do this. Now to be honest, usually I only make half of this size of batch, so I wasn't quite anticipating how full this bowl was going to get. I choose not to use the stand mixer on this because I feel that um, the cold metal um, makes it worse for sticking on my bowl. And at least this way, if it's really cool, I have occasionally put the bowl into the microwave to make sure it's nice and warm to stop the ingredients from setting on here. So I think I've pretty much, oh no, I can see some more in there. I'll keep kneading this until all that colour is evenly distributed through. Okay, so we have now got all of that all mixed in evenly. And what I'm going to do now is just clean up this mess and we're going to start pressing them. So there's a few different ways I've seen people putting their shampoo discs together and one of them is to use the mooncake presses. I have personally found though that these hurt my hands and I have broken them in the past when trying to make shower fizzes. So in 2017 my family all put together so I could buy a bath bomb press from Bath Bomb Express for my birthday. And this came to me in early 2018 has completely changed how I make some of my products. I went directly to Jason and Bath Bomb Express in the US 
and I purchased my hand press from him but he does do pneumatic presses as well he is a really great guy who is always willing to help he has a fantastic Facebook page out there as well if you do invest in one of his presses and he's always there to help um, with any questions you may have for people in Australia, if you don't wish to purchase directly from the US, depending what the currency exchange rate is doing and things like that, he does have an Australian distributor here called Bath Bomb World, and he does um, stock some of the supplies that go with it. He stocks the um, hand press, but I don't think he has the pneumatic press if you're wanting that one. I went with the hand press. Um, I would have loved the pneumatic, but unfortunately, um, one of my dogs, she's very sensitive to loud noises and sound, and I didn't think she was going to be able to cope with a compressor going off. Now, the mold that I'm going to use, I'm using an aluminium mold, and I'm using the tablet mold that he makes. Um, he has also come up with a new mold specifically for shampoo discs, which comes in HDPE, which is this really heavy plastic that you see on the press here. Now, I have found when I use some of my HDPE molds that I do have to go with this press, that the mix did tend to stick and the colours stuck to the plastic, so I couldn't swap between fragrances without having to wash and clean out the moulds in between. Whereas when I've used my aluminium mould, I find that it comes off really well, leaves the um, mould nice and clean as well, so it's a bit of a time saver for me to use this one. So I'm just going to pop the top of my mould into the press here, push it into place, like so I'm just going to loosen it a little bit as well what I've got I've got my mix on the scales and I'm just going to tear it down and then I'm going to grab a spoon and I'm going to spoon out the amount of mix that I want into my mold so basically I'm waiting it until that number comes down to a negative number equal to the weight that I put in so on these I'm actually weighing them out at 60 grams and I list them as 55. I always add 10% um, volume to any of my products so that I don't get caught out by any of the labeling people. So I'm just going to push down on the press and lift up. Now what people say when using these aluminium molds is that the mix does stick. So all I do is give it a quick tap and it comes out. And then I push down on my little tool that comes with all of the presses and then it comes out like that, a little twist and it simply comes off. So I do find that the aluminium moulds are really nice and easy. I have seen some people say that you need to um, coat them in um, plastic so it doesn't stick but I just find doing it that way um, is great. You may find it different if you do have a pneumatic press because it does put a lot more pressure. And could make it stick but with the hand press it's just nice and easy so we'll do the next one and push down and out it comes so nice and simple and easy so I've explained all the ingredients that I put into the shampoo bars and hopefully you can see why they're good for you and your hair now um, now if you ever do forget to um, tear your scales because you're chatting away just work in multiple so I'm working in 60 so I know this time I need to come up to 120 to get my next um, lot of 60 grams so we've got that in there so I also said that they were in, were good for the environment now the reason being is that one of these little bars is equivalent to maybe two to three maybe even four bottles of shampoo depending upon the size and the type that you use now the these little shampoo discs can give you anywhere from 60 to 100 washes of hair depending upon how long your hair is how thick it is and the type of water that you have whether it is hard water or soft water now so with having that many washes and um, they do quite literally last months in the shower, um, it means that you're saving all those plastic bottles, which is really great for the environment. 
Now as I went through those ingredients, I also explained that a lot of them were quite conditioning as well. So many people have said to me that they have found that they don't need to use a conditioner when using these shampoo bars. So you're also saving on plastic bottles for your conditioner. So that has to be really good for the environment too. So I said at the beginning there were also a whole lot of other benefits to using the shampoo discs. Now one of those benefits is that it is very much a multi-use product that is also a space saver. So we've already said that you don't need to use as many bottles of shampoo. Um, so that means you are actually saving space on your shower caddy by using these. So you don't have all your shampoo and conditioner bottles everywhere. That means then if you are a traveller in maybe a caravan, you can take these shampoo discs with you and you don't use up all that space in the tiny little bathrooms that you often get in the caravans. So that's a really good benefit for them. Now on the topic of travel, these shampoo discs will also work as a, uh, a body cleanser or a body wash. So if you just take your one little shampoo bar with you on a quick business trip, you can wash and condition your hair and also wash your body with it as well. So that means you take less with you in your luggage. Now if you're a day tripper or someone that just does an overnight trip and you're travelling by plane, it also has that benefit that because this is a solid bar of surfactant or cleaning agent, so shampoo, your conditioner and body wash, you can take it on in your carry-on luggage and you don't have to worry about security restrictions on how much product you can take with you on the aeroplane because it's solid and not liquid. Recent changes to um, flight travel within Australia has really limited the amount of liquids you can now take and it's resulted in people losing their toiletries when they're traveling. So these shampoo bars are great for people who do a one or two night trip away. They can take one of these, they know they've pretty got much got more than 50% of their wash bag with them and it's not going to get taken away. Now as mentioned, this can be used as a body wash. So if you do purchase a shampoo disc and you decide that it's really not for you because not everyone is going to like using a solid shampoo it does take a little bit to get used to using them as opposed to um, using the liquids but if you decide that it's really not for you just continue to use it as a body wash instead So I'm going to keep going and press these um, out and then I'll come back in just a bit. Right, so our shampoo discs are now all pressed and I'm going to leave them for one or two days before I go ahead and package them. Now, in keeping with that environmental friendly aspect of the shampoo discs, we package them into a recyclable cardboard box which has all the details that you need to know about the product on here. Now, the shampoo disc itself inside the box is wrapped in a biodegradable film for a couple of reasons. One is to actually protect it from the weather elements both within my studio with the constant change of temperature and going to and from the markets and it's also there for hygiene reasons. When I'm at the markets people like to open the boxes and have a look and have a smell and by keeping them in the plastic I know that you're getting a hygienic product at the end of the day. Now the shampoo discs are becoming really popular with small businesses and there's been a huge boom of them but there's also been a few blog posts written about them about the high pH levels of the shampoo discs. Ideally for hair you need a pH level of about 6 to 6.5 and the sodium cocoa sulfate does come in anywhere between 7.5 and 10.5 but with all the other ingredients that I add in there it brings it back down to about that 6.5 range which is great for hair care. And just to actually show you I've set up a little bit of an experiment. So in my little bowl here I have some brown vinegar and vinegar should have a pH level of about 2.5. Now I have my little strips here which uh, measure the pH level of things. I'm just going to drop it into my vinegar here and you can see that it has turned into a pink colour. And when you then hold it up against 
your colour strip here, you can see it's sitting somewhere between that 2 and 3 mark. So we're sitting about that 2.5. So my strips do work. So that's my little vinegar. So I'll pop that one there. Now in this um, little glass, chop glass I have here, I have some normal shampoo. And this is a shampoo I was using when I kept running out of my own shampoo. And I have just diluted it with a bit of water so we can get a bit more of an accurate reading. And I'll dip the strip in here, give it a bit of a shake. And as you pull it out, you can see it actually hasn't really changed colour at all. So it's sitting somewhere between that 6 and 7. So that's a really good pH level for your um, store-bought shampoos. Now this is a piece of... Um, soap and most people say i'm just going to put a bit of water on it most people say that soaps are really high in ph and i've heard some people say they go up as high as 14 um as a, a number 14 which is going to strip the skin now i thought i would quickly measure how much ph was actually in my soap so i'm just going to give that a bit of a wiggle around on the wet soap and i'm just going to put a little bit more water on there Okay, so I've wet that down, got a bit more water, and as we pull that out, you can see it's gone a shade of green, and it's sitting between that 9 and 10 sort of mark on here. So yes, it does have a slightly high pH, but it's not as high as what people do say soaps come in at. And I've also been told that if you have got nice healthy skin, by using that slightly high pH level of a soap, if your skin's nice and healthy, it will clean off any of the sort of... Um, bits that you want to clean off but then if your skin's nice and healthy it will reset it back to itself quite quickly so don't be too afraid about using handmade soaps to clean as opposed to um, surfactant cleaners like shower gel okay so then finally what we'll do is have a look at the shampoo bar so I've shaven a little bit off that shampoo bar and diluted it into some warm water here I am going to take my strip and I'm just going to give it a little bit of a jiggle through this water so it can absorb some of that mix and we'll see what it does. So it has got a slightly greenish tinge to it, which shows then that it sits between a 6 and a 7. So these are quite a good pH level for hair care. So if you are reading any of these reports that say that these new shampoo discs or solid shampoos are not good for the hair, just make sure that you are finding out what the pH level is. So I hope you've enjoyed watching how I make our newly released shampoo discs. If you have, why not leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below. I really do appreciate all of your support. If you do have any questions, I will try and get back to you as soon as I can. And just before I do go, I'd like to say a big hello to Boo from Moo Boo Melts and More. I've been following her on Instagram since I first joined the platform and I think she is one of the most inspirational young ladies that I have come across. She is still going to school and running her own family-based business. So hi Boo. Now before I do sign off, if you haven't already, why not subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell sign and it will let you know when I bring you the next weekly video. So thank you for watching and until then, have a great week.